Keep an eye out. We're hoping to visit these guys really soon. Deep Creek Lake in Maryland, bluemoonrising.org. I'm talking about tiny houses and cabins for rent. If you'd be so kind, check out my book too on amazon.com. It's tiny house and cabin concepts and ideas, a book I released called Humble Homes, Simple Shacks, and a hands-on workshop, one of the few ones out there, one of the bigger ones, Tennessee, relaxshacks.com, coming up April 11th through the 13th outside Memphis. We all know that tiny houses can be perfect spaces for one person. Whether they be college age, college graduates, or even senior adults, we know that for those particular demographics, they can be absolutely wonderful, cost effective, cost efficient, and, and even spacious places to live. But what about for a family? What's it like for a family to live in a tiny house? Well, let me tell you about it, because we're one of the few families that live in a tiny house. There's three of us. There's me, there's my wife, and there's our two-year-old daughter. Now, I have to tell you that living in a tiny house as a family can sometimes be overwhelming. Yeah. But most of the time, it's really, well, it's the most rewarding thing that's really happened to us as a family. And the reason for that is because, well, it's hard to put it into words because so much of it is on an emotional plane. Um, it allows you to rediscover relationships that I think for a large part have been lost in our culture. It allows you to become closer because physically you are closer. And when you're physically close, you can't help but to be closer mentally, uh, psychologically, spiritually. And, uh, you know, you just... You, you can't be passive aggressive, you can't be a pacifist, you've got to face things head on, you've got to deal with things. There's a lot of eye contact, there's a lot of uh, physical presence, you know, you're in their space, they're in your space. How do you find your space? How do you define your space and my space? And there's a lot of that that goes on, but I'll tell you, ultimately, I think it makes you a better person. It makes you more able to deal with the world around you because the world around us is becoming more and more cluttered, I guess, more and more cluttered each day. And so when you're able to find peace and respite within yourself without having to go on a retreat to the middle of a, 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 a mountain somewhere where no one else exists and then hope that you can kind of keep that, uh, that nirvana going when you enter back into society, it can be difficult. But you're able to do that in the tiny house because you have to do it. Uh, it can be difficult in the sense that sometimes you do just want to be left alone. You do just want to kick back in your boxer shorts and read a book without anybody bothering you. But that's not reality. When you have a family, when you decide to start a family, to uh, live with a significant other or to get married or to you know, live with your boyfriend or girlfriend and then you know, perhaps bring a child into the equation, uh, you really sacrifice some things. You have to sacrifice things about yourself on the selfish level that you may not have been prepared for earlier. So I want to invite you to join us at www.tinyrevolution.us or on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash tinyrev, where we talk all the time about what it is to live as a family in a tiny space. We're, we're happy to answer any of your questions happy to uh, consult with you, talk about space, talk about how you make it work for you. Whatever the case, we're here for you. We love to talk about it. But let me just encourage you. It's possible. It's possible to have an awesome family in an awesome tiny house. You just have to be willing to make the sacrifices, do the dirty work, get in there, get real with yourself, real with those you live with, and then enjoy the process. So we look forward to seeing you. Again, that's tinyrevolution.us.